Okay, welcome back. Now you can see I've actually gone into Ember Digitizing Studio. I've gone to Image and I've opened the image that I saved. Now you'll notice that if we zoom out, that's the area that I wanted for my 4x4 hoop. Now because we saved that with a barrier or a line, I should say, around it, <coughs> then it gives me a true perspective of how big my design is going to be. And it's going to fill that much of my 4x4 four four hoop. OK, so I'm going to zoom back in again so you can see what we're doing. You'll also notice on the right hand side, I've actually digitized the design, but I've closed it all off so you can't actually see it at the moment. Now we're going to start off by digitizing the stalk part of the design. So I'm going to turn that back on and you can see the completed design that I did. If I now right click and split, we have all the parts individually done. So I'll go to those green parts and I'll just turn them off in the order that I actually did them. Now I have to do this because sometimes my um, screen capture video program objects to some of the things that Ember does. So you can see that there's the stalk that I did and that was the first part of my design. Now I'm going to zoom in again and I'm going to select and go into node. Now you'll see the actual nodes that I used for this design. Because it was the first part, I've started up the top. So when I have hit my um, tool to do my satin stitch, I click there, I separate those nodes, and then I do one node from there down at the bottom, and another node from on that side down to the bottom, and then I just move them where I want them. You don't need to keep putting nodes all the way down, providing it's going in the direction that you want it to go in. It's got the right amount of curves. That's all you need, are just those two. And then you hit the space bar and generate stitches. Now, as you can see, that's, that was quite easy to do, that first part of the design. Now, the second part I do is the other leaf. So I'm going to turn that back on again, and I've gone down to this leaf. I'll turn the nodes on again and I started at the point of the leaf. I didn't start down here. So I highlighted that, put one node in there and another node down the bottom. I've gone back up again to here, put one node there and one node at the bottom. I've made sure I have these facing each other so that I can right click on that and put an end of segment to tell Ember Studio the direction I want that leaf to go. Hit the space bar. Now if you find you have rather a square looking top up here, just select it again, go into your nose and just move it a bit closer. Don't cross it if you can help it, otherwise you'll get that dreaded message. Alright, so that's selected, generated stitches. Now the next part that I did, turn that, was this big part here. Again, if I turn on the nodes, you can see I started at the top, I put one, two, three nodes in, and the same on the other side, added my end of segments, hit the space bar, and generated my stitches. The next part, I'll turn it on, and the next part is actually up here turn the nodes on and again I started at the top of that leaf and I just put one there, one there, hit the space bar and generated stitches. The next part of the design was this part of the design. Again I'll turn the nodes on, started up here and all I did was put one down there and another one down there, moved it into position where I wanted it. And I've moved it over. It's not exactly how I actually drew it. I've moved it over to fill in a gap in here. Hit the space bar, select it, and generate stitches. 
finally, I did this part. Again, started up here. Now if you're not sure where your nodes ended and you want to start the next up lot up here, hit your three and your four keys and those brings, that'll bring those two points into position for you. Again, one there, one at the bottom, one there, one at the bottom, added my end segments. Hit the space bar and generated stitches. Now you'll notice that if I zoom out, we have all those now in position where we want them. What I didn't do was do my connection stitches, so if I leave it like that I have jump stitches everywhere. So now I go to the second part of the design and select it. I go to transform and create connection to previous object. When I did that, I got a connection stitch. Now that connection stitch, if I just delete that, and select transform create connection stitch. Now highlight that connection stitch, show the nodes. You can see if you zoom in where that connection stitch went from. Now it started and went through here. I want to make sure it stays within this area. So I'm just going to move that slightly over there. It's still going to be a bit close to my liking to the edge. So I click back onto that, try not to move these. If you move them, that's what gives you those extra little jump stitches. I'm going to say insert, and that's inserted a nice little node for me, so I can just bring that down to make sure it curves through the center the best I can of that leaf, and hit the enter key. And there is that highlighted area of a connection stitch. Now I go to the next part of the design that I did, and again, transform, create connection stitch. So I'll just remove that, click it, transform, create connection stitch. Now if I highlight that, you can see it's going straight down there. We don't want it down there. We need to bury it. So I'll hit the node key, again, right click and insert. I'm just going to pull that over to make sure that it's underneath this lot of stitches. I'll bend it a bit so that it's not coming across the top of this area here. It's going to go around the bottom part there. So now we've added that next connection stitch. Now the next part of the design is way up here. and there's the connection stitch. And I had a couple of points to get that where I wanted it, so it went down the centre of that stitch there. And hit your space bar. The next part of the design that I want a connection stitch to is from here back to that one. And there's the connection stitch there that it gave me. That's fine, I'm just going to leave that where it is, so I hit the space bar. The last one we need is this last one here. And that's the connection stitch. Again, I had to add a nose so that I could bend it round the bottom so that it's not going across any of, on the top of any of those other stitches. 